All right, there. We have here a Raspberry Pi. In our case, we got the Raspberry Pi 2, you might have the Raspberry Pi A, you might have the newest model with Wi-Fi, doesn't matter. So, this is all about Raspberry Pi, how to turn a Raspberry Pi into an amazing musical service that you can stream your music to and turn any stereo into an AirPlay enabled stereo for just under 40 bucks. So let me tell you a little bit more about this project. So how does it work? You know, the point is the Raspberry Pi is basically a mini computer, right? A mini computer where we will run Linux, but we will not run, you know, a full-blown Linux installation with a graphical interface, with a keyboard to be hooked up, with an HDMI cable. Now we don't want to do that. We actually want to keep it minimal. What's the advantage of having a minimal installation is that, first of all, we can get away with a very small SD card, which is cheaper, bonus for that. Then we don't need a monitor, we don't need a keyboard, but it's going to be a little bit more complicated setup. So follow with me until we are done with the first step. So let's fire up the Mac and let's head straight to the Raspberry Pi website and let's check out what we can install as an operating system. So let's click for download and let's skip this noob thing. I mean, we are definitely not noob, we are pro. Come on, guys. Let's go for Raspbian and let's get the Raspbian Buster Lite. Right, so this is pretty hardcore. We are basically downloading the full experience, the full Linux experience. We're gonna have no graphical user interface. We're gonna have only shell access to this guy. And the next thing we want to download is this software called Balena Etcher. This is just a tool to basically write on our SD card in a safe way so that we don't mess around with system file and so on. Just go to the Balena IO website and hit the download button right here, download. All right, great. Now, while the ISO is downloading, we can check out the Balena Etcher software. Now let's fire up this Balena Etcher. I see it's just a classic DMG file. Just open it and double click on the software to get it up and running. Nothing complicated here, honestly. Right, so see what we have verifying. Yes, trying to catch up with the software. Yeah, I kind of trust things I download myself, you know, like Right, so there we go with the Balena Etcher software. All we have to do is hit select image and let's see the fresh image we just downloaded of Raspberry Pi ISO. We need to plug in our SD card to the SD card reader we just connected before. So let's just do that. There is a dedicated slot for the mini SD card. By the way, if you have another Raspberry Pi, you might need the larger card here. And if you don't have this small reader, you can use an adapter to just get it there. It's no problem. I mean, just get any Raspberry Pi, you're good to go. Right, so now SD card is connected and you see it has been recognized by Balena Etcher. So all I need to do now is to hit the flash button. And you can double check the capacity here to make sure that you're actually flashing the right device. So let's hit flash. You need the password for your admin rights and Flash is ongoing, in a while we'll be good to go. And all right, it's done. So we flashed successfully our device, but before testing the Raspberry Pi, we actually need to make a small modification. So let's unplug this SD card and let's plug it back in into the system. Right. Just a while and you will see I have this boot partition. To get things going, 
we need to create a small file here in the boot ISO. So let's just take the text edit, I mean, or whatever, let's make new document. And we actually don't care whatever is inside this document, but it has to be called SSH and it has to be placed in the boot directory. So let's go to it and let's fire up this SSH file and click this if no extension is provided use txt because we actually want our file to be called SSH, no extension whatsoever. And let's hit the save button and it's done. And I can check here, I have an extra file which is just called SSH and this will actually tell my Raspberry Pi to enable SSH for headless operation. All right, great, so we are done. Let's move on, let's unplug this and let's plug this in the Raspberry Pi. All right, so it's time to fire this thing up. First thing first, we insert the micro SD card into the micro SD slot on the back of the Raspberry Pi. And now we have an operating system and we're ready to power it up and connect it to the Ethernet. To fire this thing up, we have to connect the power supply. The power supply comes through this micro USB cable I just showed you earlier. So we just connect it to the micro USB port right here on the back of the unit like that it snaps on and we are ready to connect it to a USB power source now in this case we are going to connect this Raspberry Pi directly to the router and we're actually going to use the router itself as a power source follow me up and I show you how to do that we're going to plug one end of the Ethernet cable to our router just like that snaps in and the other end we have to plug to the Raspberry Pi to ensure our Raspberry Pi gets connection to the network. Let's just take the other end of the cable and plug it into the Raspberry Pi. As easy as that. There we go. And now, as you can see on the back of the Raspberry Pi, I have some blinking light, which means the Raspberry Pi is getting connection. All right, you made it through the hardest part of the tutorial and now let's relax back and have some fun. Now our Raspberry Pi is configured to work remotely. This means we don't need to think about it, we don't need to go where it is. We can work on our Raspberry Pi remotely and set it up and work from our MacBook in this case over Wi-Fi. Because the Raspberry Pi is connected to the router and our MacBook is connected via Wi-Fi to the same router. So it's time to log in into our Raspberry Pi and finally get some action done. All right, let's find out if our Raspberry Pi was successfully connected to the router. To find it out, we just open a browser and we just hit the address of our router. In my case, this is 192.168.1781. In your case, it might be 192.168.01. I don't know. Anyhow, head to your router page, type your password and get in the administration page. Now what you see, I have a lot of devices connected to my network and one of them is called Raspberry Pi. And indeed, he is the Raspberry Pi we have been working with so far. So to find out, we just click on more. Uh, we go to our details of our network. Now you can see in this case, the Raspberry Pi is connected to the LAN 3, port number 3, 100 megabit per second, makes sense. This is the port I've been attaching it to. And now if I scroll down, I get some details. Now, of course, this might change depending on the router you're using. But hey, you see here, I have again my Raspberry Pi. And if I hit details again, I can see the IP address. This is what I'm looking for. You see 192.168.178.43, right? Great, so basically my Raspberry Pi got an IP address assigned by my router and now it's ready to go. So now it's time to fire up our terminal, our shell. In macOS, we're going to just type terminal. We get a nice terminal. In uh, Linux, you might use GNOME terminal. In Windows, you might use an SSH client or whatever you want to use. Anyhow, once you're in, type SSH space and then the username of our Raspberry Pi, which is preset to simple Pi. And then add 
and the address which we just got from the router page 192.168.178.43 and now we're good to go so let's press enter you see we got a warning here that the key fingerprint is not recognized this makes sense I mean it's the first time we connect to it so the host is not known just type yes don't worry about it and now it comes to the password now the default password is simply raspberry let's type it and let's get in now you see i mean now of course you see i get this warning this is actually an important one so ssh is enabled and the default password for pi user has not been changed this is a security risk and indeed it is so let's tell what this guy is telling us to do please log in as the pi user and type p a s s w d to type a new password now for our example we are going to type as a password p i one two three four bang all right that's it for today we learned a lot about the raspberry pi now it's time to take some time think about it and stay tuned because in the next episode we're going to finally turn our raspberry pi into an amazing musical service so subscribe for more get the notification when the next video is out and smash the like button. See you in the next one.